Hello and welcome to episode 30 of Crucible Bootcamp. I'm your host, Keen Koala, and today we're going to be taking a look at a salvage match on Burning Shrine by Voidwalker using a pull sniper loadout. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, Burning Shrine is one of those interesting maps where it's set up like a tic-tac-toe grid. So there are different ways you can move around the map based on numbers uh, to move through different rooms to get, uh, and it'll let you see different angles into the different locations. And I'll show you guys that uh, in a second. So our heroes, like I said, he's running a pull sniper loadout. So pretty much all of his engagements are in that mid to long uh, distance. He's running nothing manacles. So you can see he has double scatter grenades down here in the left. Um, so as a warlock, if you're running this kind of mid range uh, type of, of loadout, you have to utilize your scatter grenades and your melee really well to deal with any time someone's going to push you. So you need to scatter grenade at your feet or right just in front of you and try to prime them uh, with, your, with your pulse rifle as they push into you. So he starts off this engagement really well by supporting his teammate pushing into B to the salvage point. It's really easy to get these kills when you follow around your teammates and just shoot the same target as them basically have all the time to kill uh, and it's important he continues to support his team but he's pulling out of cover so if the enemy player had a little bit better aim there he would have ended up dying but the interesting thing about being in the center lane uh, compared to the location of the enemy is that it's easy to pull in the cover by jumping into the center of a different angle so this is this where he's jumping into B he's exposed to the shelf out here to the right but because all of his enemy opponents are on bridge, this is completely this is an actual pull in the cover. So your pulls in the cover differ um, or vary based on where your opponent is. So it's important to keep that in mind as well. There's not a one size fits all pull in the cover. Um, you have to keep in mind where your teammate teammates are and where the enemy players are. So you can just like I said, he you can't really push players with this kind of loadout. And this is a mistake he makes a few times. Uh, if you're gonna push for angles because people are spawning, you need to keep that mid distance uh, intact at all times. So that would mean you, you, you would jump on this door and pull, uh, kill anyone rounding this corner as opposed to jumping all the way over and pulling into someone's shotgun like he did. So again, if we do push like that, we have to make sure that we're using our scatter grenade and we're using our melee. That way, at least it'll end up in a trade instead of just a free kill. So again, he's just supporting this angle, playing the objective, which is good. If you're a sniper, all you really need to do is protect the objective and salvage. Um, the salvage scoring system changed, so it's actually you want to cap the point now. Uh, you get... Um, you get more, you, you still get the same amount of points for capping it, so 100 per person and then 200 for capping, but they changed the way you disable it. So before you would disable it and everyone on the team would get 150 points, which means that if you disable the uh, relic, you would get 450 points. Bungie changed that so that if you disable the relic, you get a maximum of 200 points. And that 200 points only goes to the person that disabled it in the first place. So as long as you have two players capping the salvage point, it's going to be neutral if they take away the, the relic. Um, if you have three players, you're always going to be up 100 points if they manage to you know not kill you at all but still get the relic. Um, obviously, if they wipe you completely, that's you know 300 points plus any bonus headshot points or ability points uh, plus the 200. So, but you're only down 300 points in that scenario which isn't nearly as bad as it used to be, where you would be down, you know, seven, 800 points from one uh, relic disruptor, d d to run relic disruption. So it's a lot better to cap the point. You should always be capping the point now that you, if you want to play salvage. And it got changed to one of those weekly, um, in the weekly rotation now, it's not in the normal director. So if you are missing that grimoire, uh, when you do go into play, continue to play the objective. So. As soon as his angle basically leaves him, and he doesn't, he waits around way too long in this situation. As you can see, he doesn't really have a shot on anyone. Um, he's still protecting the uh, the probe, but 
as this as this door closes, if the enemy team pushes inside, he has he has no great lane to cover that that salvage. So he needs to move and try to support his teammates. It's really important as a sniper that you don't stay in the same place for very long, unless you're playing an objective like you are in salvage. And then when you do uh, cover that lane, you need to move back and forth within the lane. You don't want to just stand in one spot hard scope. You want to move back and forth in it uh, to so that the enemy team can't really uh, push into you very easily. So again, he's he's kind of timid here, and he ends up because he's not uh, completely in the fight. He can't. His teammates ended up dying, and he can't really stay there for reses. So again, he's just backed off, waiting for people to push into him. Gets a nice mid-range snipe there, finishes him with some body shots, and pushes back into cover. Now, in this situation here, it's a 1v1. You know that one of the other teammates, is, one of the other enemy players has spawned inside somewhere, and you're in this 1v2. Uh, there's really two things you can do. Because this is salvage, it's normally in your favor to hold on to your sweeper for a salvage either push or a salvage defense. But if this was a normal threes, then I would say in order to win this 1v1 that's coming up, I would just Nova this person and make orbs for your team and let your team deal with the defense. But instead he ends up he ends up dying. Um, and mainly that's because he's in completely exposed where he ends up uh, fighting. So he started here on outside platform and he moved to this location here. And as you can see, there's no cover in this entire area. So it was good for him to pull around because his enemy play this enemy player was around, was here in front of the the heavy area. But either way, his opponent is going to pull into locations where he's going to be completely exposed. So if you do end up trying to run away through cover, you have to continue to adjust your cover as the enemy player moves around to re-engage you. You can't just stay in the open like that. So off spawn, we should be looking to either A, support our teammates, or B, get an angle on the players pushing into us. Now that our teammates are dead, all we really need to do is just play patient, wait for our teammates to come back. So he pulls back into cover, which is really good. But he's getting pushed. If that was a shotgunner, then he would have been dead there. Uh, a lot sooner than he would have had, been able to get that ability to get his melee off. So we, again, we constantly want to be creating negative space when we're getting pushed. We need to backpedal, we need to run away, we need to pull them around. We don't want to stand still, firing with our primary. As soon as we see someone pushing us, we should be backpedaling. Right here, this is your moment to start moving backwards. You still have two scatter grenades up, and remember, you still have your Nova. So staying alive is paramount. So use that to your advantage. Again, scatter grenade your feet if, you're, if you can't move back fast enough. So despite him coming out on top there, uh, it could have been cleaner, and it could have ended up in, not in his favor. So now that we've finished that engagement, we have to keep in mind how many bullets are left in our pulse rifle. It, you, it takes at least three pulses with any given pulse rifle um, to kill your target. Um, best case scenario is you're running something like Spare Change or Live Milla, and it takes only two bursts. Um, but Hawksaw and Grass Bark types and Nerwin's Arc types those all take three bursts. So you can see we only have two bursts left in our mag. So if we get into another engagement, we need to keep in mind to finish that engagement, we need to be using our abilities or we need to not get in an engagement uh, right away. So when we do engage, now that we've missed a full burst, again, he pulls back into cover to reload. And then he's trying to re-engage. This is a really good helicopter there to save his life. His opponent didn't ha had no idea what was going on. And they end up team firing the guy down that was on C flag. So again, that's a good engagement uh, in the end, but it could have gone a lot better if we remembered to pull back into cover after our initial engagement, or just utilize our abilities to make up for the fact that we don't have a full uh, ammo clips worth for a kill. So here he gets the nice double after saving that heavy or that uh, super, and he's gonna just clean up the last kill. So really good play there. Again, we should now that we've won the engagement, uh, our and we can see all the way across our 
teammates are spawning, so our teammates are here. We're here on A special, and we just killed the enemy in this area. So knowing that we're in the center of the map, uh, the enemy players, if they spawn at the same time, are likely going to be split spawned. One or two people are going to end up on back wall. And one or two people are going to end up outside. So that means we as a sniper need to set up an angle for one of these locations or push to our teammates and then push out to whichever side we want. Uh, I would highly suggest pushing to your teammates. It's much easier to get kills. So we just push straight across. Keeping in mind that if people do spawn outside, we need to be jumping or going around this pillar. Uh, same thing if they spawn back wall, we need to keep in mind that people could be on bridge as we, as we push across. But we're just going to support our teammates and then we're going to decide which direction we're going to go. We don't, what we don't want to do is wait for someone to come to us. Unless we know they're going to come to us. So again, so he sets up exactly where those two players were and gets a really, really nice double kill. And like I said, they're split spawning outside as well. So again, this time he doesn't push all the way. So this is what you want to do. This was a perfect way to engage this person um, if they're backpedaling like they were. Is he just jumps onto uh, the door here and doesn't push all the way out. And his teammates are right there to support him as well. So now they're just pushing out to the, the salvage point. Again, cap it as a, as a full team, and it isn't nearly as bad as if it, if it gets uh, dismantled. So with your teammates there, Arcblade really isn't that scary. It's very easy to just shut down Arcblade completely um, if you just team fire it. So in this situation, knowing that we have a, at least one person attacking us, what we don't want to do is focus on this res down here on the left. We want to focus on securing it. That means killing the people that are uh, challenging us. Again, we have we still haven't reloaded, so we have to get a snipe. Or we need to use a scatter grenade. You don't want to completely commit to a, to a res like that. Because like you saw, he just got picked off for free without challenging back. So unfortunately, they end up salvaging that probe. But again, now we're with our teammates, we're going to push with, with, get that heavy, and then move around with heavy. So, I've pointed this out a few times, but ADSing in is, with any weapon, could be considered hard scoping. So it's important when you ADS, you don't do it for very long. Just like if you were to hard scope. And this, and this uh, the way he's doing it right now, um, you need to be constantly checking your radar. As you can see, someone's pushing behind him, and he's just going to hard scope in this hallway, waiting to track someone with truth. If you have a rocket launcher, uh, you only need to track at the very last moment. You need, it's more important for you to keep track of who's on your radar. Uh, if he wasn't ADS like that and hard scoped in, that guy would have never snuck up behind him to sort him. He would have seen it coming and could have finished him off. So again, we're in the center of the traffic lane right now. We're not next to cover, and this, this location is very dangerous because there's a little hazard box right here. So if we don't secure that hazard box by hard scoping in this area, we're, end up, we're going to end up getting picked off for free by someone dealing with the hazard box. And they never nearly need to challenge us. They can just fire on the hazard box. So it's important to secure this area uh, on Burning Shrine. The same with this special here. There's a hazard box there as well. It's important to secure those hazard boxes if you're going to push to them before you get to them. So again, there's an enemy probe. We're just going to Nova it. Again, this is why you save your super for, uh, for salvage points. In this case, because you have double scatter grenade, if someone's just going to pop a super right in front of you, it's going to take a second for them to move. So throwing two scatter grenades there is, is ideal as opposed to throwing one and trying to get out of the way of the hammer. I would just, still, you can still throw your second scatter grenade at any point. What you don't want to do is move into a sunbreaker, because if that sunbreaker is running sun charge, you're just making it really easy for them to kill you. They don't have to aim a hammer. So again, we're pushing back, pushing forward. Try, try, to, try to keep that distance. 
Again, you gotta stay in mid range. If you don't want to push into players with this loadout. And if you do push into them, what's really important if you're gonna push into a close mid to a close range engagement with a pulse slide arm or a pulse sniper loadout, is that you know how many bullets it takes to combine with your abilities for a kill. So if you're using uh, scatter grenade, scatter grenade is lethal on its own. So just sometimes just getting one burst of a body shot will let your scatter grenade kill someone very easily. But if you're running something like Axion Bolt, that only does 122 max on Explosion. So that means you need to get a, head a full headshot burst or two body shot bursts with your Pulse Rifle. Um, if you don't do that, then you're not going to kill and you're, end up, you're going to end up being shotgunned. Uh, same thing with your melee. Voidwalker, Voidwalker melee doesn't do any bonus damage. It still does 122. So again, a pulse blur burst uh, to the head or two bursts to the body are going to combine to finish with a melee. In these locations where you have a true flank, like he did here, you don't want to pulse someone. You want to use that opportunity to line up a sniper shot if you're a sniper. This is the ideal time for you to be sniping people is when no one's paying attention to you and you have all the time in the world to line up your shot. Even just getting one single burst on the opponent, it's going to let you body shot, finish them with a body shot with your sniper. So it's important when you di completely disengage from an encounter that you know the proper way to disengage. And the main way you do that is you need to think of two things. One is, are you going to re-engage? So are you going to move back from out of cover? So if you do that, you need to think, how am I going to do that? Because they know where I am. So you need to do that with a jump or a slide. Uh, if you have a pulse rifle and a sniper, it's more, uh, it's going to be ideal for you to slide because you want that uh, as much accuracy as you possibly can when you re-engage. Um, and if you decide you don't want to, re-engage, you want to completely disengage, you got to think about what your opponent is going to do uh, to push around this corner. Because if they have a shotgun and you stay in this area, a simple slide will end up getting you killed. So you need to move back beyond slide range in order to completely disengage. So that means in this particular instance, if you're here and your opponent is, let's say it's a shotgunner and they're pushing you through this corridor, where you actually want to stand is well beyond slide range and you're absolute so you want to make sure you're even further away so here or all the way out here are going to be uh, better for you or even all the way back to heavy you want to move back as far as possible to not give them a chance to finish you off as they round that corner what you don't want to do is stand here because again they're just going to slide into you and kill you Again, we're challenging in the center of the lane here. As soon as we don't see someone, we should be in the center of the lane or at, from our cover. We need to push, be pushing from the center of the lane into cover. In this particular instance, uh, it's very easy because there's a box right here. So if we're in the center of the lane, we just slide to the box and then disengage. Because if we, if we know someone is inside, we don't want to push them with this loadout. Again, we want to continue to create that medium range di distance where our weapons are going to be effective. So there's a probe out now. So your team, they're just going to end up pushing to it. He's going to take a different angle, which is, I like this push a lot. Um, and this plays really good because you know exactly where the enemy player is going to be. You prime them with your primary. So that medium range shot just for a body shot is very safe. And as you can see, it just results in a very easy kill. So some major takeaways for me um, for our hero, Sail to Sea, where one, uh, you have to prioritize better uh, and be a better teammate. So keeping in mind that what are your priorities during salvage? If the enemy has a relic out, your priority is to get to the relic, kill people around it, and dismantle it. Um, over reses. You want to dismantle the, the salvage over getting reses because you don't know if the enemy players res and then they can just immediately snipe you. You want to get rid of that salvage uh, relic as soon as possible. Um, doing that and playing the objective is going to make you a better teammate as well. Uh, the second thing is you don't want to search for your targets in the center of a lane. You always want to be sticking to cover. 
Um, and searching mostly with your primary, not necessarily with your secondary. Because that's going to give you a chance to react if you get pushed. And finally, you got to know your loadout's ranges, when it's strong and when it's not, and know how to handle your disengages. So that final, uh, that final engagement where we were around the corner near C-Special, knowing that if we do get re-engaged as we pull back into our cover, that we need to move back further so we don't get uh, killed for free if someone rounds the corner on us. So now I'm going to go into... Uh, Burning Shrine to show you guys basically what I mean about the tic-tac-toe. Oh, so let's let's explain the tic-tac-toe first of all. So Burning Shrine is set up on a grid system. So one way you can uh, visualize this is you can take these sections and they're all going to be a different room. So all of these different sections are a different room on the map. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So these different angles or these different rooms allow you to cover different areas. And I've covered this in a prior episode as well, but I'm gonna actually show you in game uh, a better visualization of what you're gonna be covering. So keep this in mind, this, uh, this tic-tac-toe system. And it works just like a tic-tac-toe board. You can see diagonally based on where you are in that room. So if you're, example, if you're in five here, you can look out diagonally to seven. Same thing for the other side. Here you can look out diagonally this direction, st straight out, straight out. Um, you can even look out here. So there's going to be a lot of different angles that you can actually look at. Alright, burning shrine. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys some sniper lines and different ways you can see around this map. So we spawned in 9, this is 9, I'm going to move to 8, this is 8, and 7. So let's cover these angles outside 7, 8, 9. So from 7, you can see into 4 here, which is A special. And if you move forward up a little bit uh, closer, you can see into 1 as well. So if we go to... And again, if we're in back on the head glitch rock, we can see into five. And we can still see all the way across through eight and nine from seven as well. So in eight, you can see into seven and nine here. You can see into five. And if you go up top on top heavy, you can see straight back through five to two here. If we go to nine, which is alpha spawn. In nine, we can see all the way up into six. So six, C special, up onto C, C platform or C table, whatever you want to call it, near C bridge, and all the way back to C flag. So we can see a little bit into three. C flag is three, this is three. So I've pushed, so now I've pushed into uh, six. So six lets you see outside into nine. And you can also head glitch into five, all the way across four. Uh, 
you can see all the way back on the C flag on this corner on the C table and this is a, again this is another head glitch on the five and on the four on the edge here which is a very popular popular spot for trials you can see it up into a bridge so now we're on bridge we can come back here and we can protect ourselves from C flag you can see all the way across bridge you can kind of angle this to see back into the back wall here you don't necessarily have to push all the way into C flag to see black back wall you can come all the way back here so it's very easy for you to pull back into cover and still cover the same area where someone's going to be attacking you from so this is C flag or room three so three you can see back into six you can see out into two and one and you can also see on the bridge and if you hide here you can easily see back wall and be protected from these areas here so this is room two and two again you can see all the way out to heavy top heavy out in eight you can see into five either side of five depending on which side you're on out into one and out into three and then you can also see the other side of the bridge so now room one or bravo spawn so you can see bridge here, you can see out into two, all the way over to the three, and then out into four. If you move a little bit up towards the bridge, you can see out to seven. And you move onto the bridge, you can see cross bridge. Same thing, you can snipe that corner room. And as well from over here, you can snipe the corner. If you move all the way out, uh, into four with a special ace this is a special so this is room four you can see out on the head glitch see out on the other head glitch on seven see into five see across the six see back up into one this area here is a head glitch as well let's move side to side so that's a lot of sniper lanes so let's talk about shotguns shotguns on this map uh, in order to be successful with a shotgun, you have to move through cover, right? Burning Shrine has a lot of cover that you can move through, but the biggest issue you're going to have is moving from 7 into 4. So this is the lane that you want to avoid as a shotgunner. Why? Because there's no cover here, right? I'm completely exposed, even as a Titan. You're going to be completely exposed all the way out and all the way back in. So really, if you're going to approach this lane here and someone's on the back wall, you have to do it with your primary from this distance. You're not going to have an opportunity to get into shotgun lane, in the shotgun range. Instead, you need to move through cover around in order to get to that same area. Just getting to this point means that you're very gonna, going to be very lethal with your shotgun. You can slide here, prime at the primary, and then shotgun someone. Whereas if you try to approach head on, as a shotgunner, you should basically never be approaching head-on unless you're a Titan and you have Juggernaut. And if you're approaching head-on as a Titan with Juggernaut, you need to be pushing over cover at the mid-distance point. An example of that would be if someone is on the other side of this box and I'm here, I can push over cover with Juggernaut and deal with someone out here. Same thing if someone's right here where I'm, where I'm jumping. As a Juggernaut Titan, you don't want to push this lane here because they're going to they're gonna deal with your shield from a safe distance. Instead, you want to push over this cover to deal with someone on the other side. So you're going to be under cover, and then once you're out of cover, your Juggernaut shield is going to take over as your cover. If you go around, you're going to get primed. That's bad. You go this way, you're going to get primed. You go the other, other side, you're going to get primed. You want to go over. And you can do this with any class, it's just going to be safer with a Titan to go over cover like this. So, as a shotgunner, I'll show you guys my, my rumble route. So you, you can start in this corner, you can do this on any rumble game. You're going to push in the, through cover, and you're just going to cover your, your uh, flanks, 
your primary and push into cover here. Again, check. You can check behind you. Push through cover. Get to this area, right? We're still under cover. We got our flanks. And we, uh, we can primary anyone on the other side. Here. And if they push us, we're in cover. So we can take out our shotgun and deal with them as they come around the corner. Um, this location is most vulnerable to something like a, a spike grenade or a lightning grenade because they can just hit this wall or this wall and you're going to end up dead because you have to push out into the open. So that's going to be a good play that your opponent can use to counter you in this location. But if they don't, you have free shots all the way across on C flag. You can see the edge of C bridge. Then you can see all of room two. You can also deal with the, the hazard. So if I deal with the hazard, I'm going to push through cover. I'm going to protect myself from C flag. I'm not going to push here to engage someone in room five. I'm going to push here so I'm protected from anyone trying to flank me through room three or C flag. So from here, I can deal with anyone in B or room five. I can deal with people on the bridge and I can cover my back. From here, you can push into the corners to deal with someone out here on C flag and have your flank protected. Push across. Same thing, you can deal with the other side now and have your flank protected. And now I wanna move around. So again, as a shotgunner, what do you wanna do? You wanna move through cover. So that means you don't wanna stay on C flag as a shotgunner. If you're gonna engage with their primary, you need to do it from the corner or you need to do it a little bit further back and edge around, right? And dip back into cover. If you wanna to try to get into shotgun range, you need to push to the corner and you can bait someone around this corner because they know you're there, right? If they see you jump into this area, they know you're there, but they have to push into shotgun range to deal with you. So that's what you want. So if they don't push into shotgun range, again, move through cover. And you can slowly edge forward on people. You don't have to completely engage. Again, I'm moving diagonally, but forward still. I still have forward momentum. I'm still under my cover. Now I can either push into the open here, or if they're on this back wall, it's going to be too dangerous for you to really push with a shotgun. So you should just primary them here from this distance. And if they leave, you want to go back to bridge. So you deal with anyone on the other side. If no one is there, you can push forward. Again, your primary is your key is key here on bridge. If someone decides to push you, that's when you shotgun them. But if they don't push you, you're just using your primary. You can either push across the bridge. This is again another good shotgun area. Or you can wrap up your rotation by going into B, dealing a primary from either side, and pushing back to our original location. Notice that I never went outside in this rotation as a shotgunner. Although there's a lot of cover that you can move over and around to close the gap, in general, you're going to end up getting crossfired out in the open when you get to here, or when you get here, or even if you're out here. There isn't great options for you to move into cover very quickly and not be exposed. Like you can move like this, but you're not going to find very many targets because of how spread out it is and how easy it is to crossfire you. So as a shotgunner on Burning Shrine, I don't want to go outside. I want to stick to inside. That's where my power point is. And if you're playing something like Trials, this is good for you as a shotgunner because point spawns here. So you never need to go outside. You never need to challenge someone on head glitch from here. You don't need to do that. You can just camp out here and not move and let them waste time. And you can just cap point for free. And if they push you from either side, you can deal with primaries. If they push you this direction, you're going to shotgun them. If they push you from this direction, you're going to primary them. It's very simple. If you have your teammates, you know, sniping up on bridge, that's even that's going to help you even more if you're sitting on point. The only thing you need to worry about is getting supered. Okay. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys this week, or today. Um, thank you for watching, as always. If you want to support the stream, you can become a Patreon backer on patreon.com slash cruciblebootcamp. If you want to submit me gameplay to get critiqued, uh, send it to keen at cruciblebootcamp.com. If you're on the Twitch stream, I have buttons now, so you can just click the button um, to go to the website, to go become a backer, to donate, anything like that. Um, next week, we're going to be going over an elimination match. So if you're in interested in elimination next Monday, um, definitely tune in for that. Um, but I've been your host, King Koala, 
and class is dismissed. Bye.